Welcome to Smarty Van, a new channel where we're gonna talk about home automation for homes that move. Vanomation. I'm Mike, and I live with my partner Shar in a 170 4x4 Sprinter van that we built as a fully DIY, home automated, home on wheels. If you look closely, you won't find any dials, buttons, switches, or gauges in this van, just a single tablet in the kitchen. We've all seen these, and these, and these, but we've replaced all that with this. Okay, we'll take a look at that control interface here in just a minute. But first, I wanna talk about five reasons why I think this is interesting. Reason number one, remote access. If we bring all of the elements of the van together into one centralized platform and the van's connected to the internet, then we can access and control everything in the van from anywhere in the world. Reason two, automation of routine tasks. Just like many of us try to do in homes that don't have wheels, we can automate things in the van to make life a little easier. But in a van, we have to worry about other systems like power and water. Reason number three, critical alerts and notifications. It's really nice to be able to be notified when some part of our system needs attention, like low state of charge of our house batteries. Reason number four, security security on the road. Yes, you can buy pre-packaged cameras and other sensors, but they're not necessarily designed for low voltage systems and usually require internet access to be particularly useful. If we build a system from the ground up, it can be more deeply integrated into our home automation platform. Reason number five, it's just sexy. It elevates the experience of living in a van and it makes life a little easier. Is it absolutely necessary to enjoy life outdoors? No, but it is kind of cool. Okay, let's bring that dashboard back and talk about everything that we've integrated and automated in our van. This is our main page that we fully customized to present all the controls that we use the most. Across the top, we have weather information, location, time zone, current street address, and national weather service alerts. Down the left column is temperature, weather, solar production, and sunrise and sunset times. At the top of the middle column, we have quick glance icons like presence detection for Shar and myself, a door sensor indicating if the sliding door or rear barn doors are open, the glycol temperature for the Rickson's heating system, and then some internet indicators like our ping speed, cellular connection level, and Starlink status. The grid in the middle are our most commonly used items for lights, bed controls, hot water, Starlink, and electromagnetic drawer locks. That's right, all 10 of the drawers in our van are secured by electromagnetic locks. Then we can access the inverter, subwoofer, and an auto fan automation that gives thermostatic control to the max air fan. The magic drawer is a special drawer on a linear actuator that also serves as a step into our bed. On the right, we have Spotify controls. When another device is using Spotify Connect, we'll see playback controls and volume as well. Then we have the Max Air Fan integrated with an IR blaster and the Arctic Turn Hatch with an RF blaster. Below that, we have HVAC controls. If it's cool in the van, we'll see controls for the Rickson's heat system. If it's warm in the van, we'll see controls for the undermount AC system. Below that, we have a grid of gauges. We have the state of charge of our house battery with voltage and solar production, as well as our gray tank and overall fresh water levels. DC load is shown in watts, unless the inverter is on, in which case we'll see AC load with a gauge to indicate if we're going to stress the inverter. Then we have the Sprinter diesel level, as well as the CPU usage on our home automation server. All right, that should give you a sense of just how deeply integrated every system is in our van, but we're barely scratching the surface. For instance, we have six DC ball valves in our plumbing system. Can you imagine what we get up to with those? Oh, and did I mention our projector screen? We'll talk about that more in future episodes, as well as electromagnetic drawer locks, the magic drawer, and automating a motorized bed platform. We'll talk about integrating Victron electrical systems, preheating water circuits, and more. But in the next episode, we're gonna talk about the open source home automation platform that makes all of that possible. So until next time, safe travels.